Live WTMP HD, Egypt Lake, Tampa, and now on 102.1 in Pinellas County. Here we go, Facebook Live. Boom, welcome aboard. Like and share with all your friends and family now. We are live. All righty. All righty. Tampa Bay. This is something that I have been planning, being involved in, trying to make happen, and, and, and having a vision allows you to keep with it and finally see it start to blossom. About 15 years ago, I started, along with some other folks with the Sheriff Black Advisory Council, the Tampa Bay First celebration of something called Juneteenth. I guess, let me give you the info, get the show started, mm -hmm. and, then, and then get into the real stuff. So, if you want to call in today during the show, the call in number is 888-247-8712. 888-247-8712. This is the Porch Talk Radio Show. And we got some really, we have some extraordinary listeners. Extraordinary. And, and I appreciate it, you know, because not only do they listen to this show, some of them take notes mm. to this show. Some of them send me suggestions for the show. And, you know, I knew when we got started, we had something good. You didn't know it, but I knew it. And, and here it is, you know, 13 years later, six years here with TMP, and we have formulated together the best urban talk radio in Tampa Bay. On the planet. Yeah. Well, we're the highest I, rated I, still. Well, well, I can't, I can't, I can't the vouch. The rated. World can't, Wide Web. We're on the World Wide Web. Live. Can't, can't vouch for the whole planet, you know. But, but that, which I know. Is what what I speak because I don't like to speak about stuff I don't know a lot about. I know if I'm saying something, I'm saying it to you because I believe it to be true, and to the best of my knowledge, it's true. So I'm not sitting here lying to you about anything. If it's something I don't know anything about, what I usually do, don't talk. I don't talk about it. I let somebody else talk about it. I uh, 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 deal with it. But this Juneteenth thing, we got it down pat. And so I'm going to give you the information about the event we're having today. I'm going to do that first. And then at the end, end of the show, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it out again because I know some people out there that's, that's writing this stuff down. And I want you to have the right information. So, so anyway, the Grand Crew de Libertalia will be partnering with the Coach Foundation this year for the celebration of the historical Juneteenth. The oldest known celebration culminating the end of slavery in the United States of America, dating back to 1865. Now, that's that's when it ended, but the Emancipation Proclamation, which everybody knows, was associated with that event, was 18 well, January the 1st, 1863. It was June 19th that the United States soldiers, led by Major General Gordon Granger, landed at Galveston, Texas, with the news that the war had ended and that the enslaved were now free. That's why blacks are calling it Freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom Month, Freedom Day. This is the 10th annual Juneteenth celebration, and this year's event will be hosted jointly by the Grand Crew de Libertalia, Inc., and which is a nonprofit organization that has given <clears throat> over $750,000 back to our community to enhance educational and economical opportunities for those students and other community citizens who've been at risk. And also, we will partner this year with Coach Foundation, 
which is a private, not-for-profit, community-based organization formed in 1981. COACH operates in economically depressed areas and, and help to provide stable environment for growth. It has been recognized with many awards, including Nonprofits of the Year, Unsung Hero Award by Tampa, Tampa Organization of Black Affairs, and over 15 certificates of appreciation from various community organizations and business. During this year's Juneteenth celebration, we will recognize several individuals for their outstanding service to the community. We will share the history of the day, which is now a national holiday and is also known as Freedom Day. In addition, we will hear from young aspiring leaders and from current elected officials and candidates. This event is made possible by your generous donations and contributions from this community and its partners. Donors and supporters, we will, fe we will feature a delicious complimentary, for those who don't know what complimentary, complimentary means, that means free. I like that. Great music, cash prizes, and more. And also, we will have a COVID protocol will be in effect. Be in effect. The Coach Foundation Incorporated also provides affordable housing and improvement programs, referral services, and counseling first-time home buyers. Housing, down payment, and closing costs assistance. Natural health seminars and community referral services. Your attendance will make the difference in someone's life. We look forward to continuing successful and support within our community. We also anticipate amazing outreach following this year's successful fundraisers. Turning the, the, turning the gap of our youth into bridges, you can make it possible by fueling the hearts of our mission. The mission is to educate, prepare, provide pillars to promising paths for which we can lead to, to tomorrow. With your critical support, we can make our youth overcome obstacles stacked against them and motivate them to be better people tomorrow. That's how some people say, well, you know, that's a core of our future. You know, that's a hundred percent of our future mm -hmm. is the youth. Mm -hmm. This year's Juneteenth event will be held on Saturday, June 18th, which is today, at the Charles Davis Conference Center located at 1002 East Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. Doors open at 2. Program begins at 2.30. Please help us by providing a sponsorship or donation. Uh, you know, if you come today, you know, bring a checkbook, bring some cash. I mean, we take those. You know, uh, cash app, you know, any, any kind of, any, Ooh, anything. Cash any, app, get any, serious any, now. Anything, yeah, we up to date with that. Uh, and you will find that if you needed information about the, the organization, Grand Crew Deliver Talia is a 501c3. Consumer Certificate of Exemption Number 59314037. So, that's the basic information and uh, it's out there. And that's today and I'm gonna be there and uh, some of my team members come. They say free food, so Whoa, some, what some, time? Some more often than not, you we'll know. Be Gabriel, able to Gabriel gonna be there. I think Tim's gonna come, so the whole team's 
from Porch Talk Radio will be there with you today. We like that price. Helping to celebrate. Let me get her autograph. Juneteenth. So, I got to remind you, not many, but just in case you forgot, tomorrow is Father's Day also. This is something that we have done jointly, Joe Team Celebration and, and Father's Day Celebration over the years because we either do a luncheon like on Friday before Father's Day and for Juneteenth luncheon is usually associated with Juneteenth the 19th, but the 19th kind of changes days, you know, when it falls on. This year, it falls on Father's Day, June 19th. You know, Eddie, and real quick, for all those people calling for Father's Day to be changed to Special Persons Day, nope. you, you already have a day for your own. It's called April 1st. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> and see, every now and then, Gabriel come through with a good zinger. Thank you. Thank bon you very bon, much. You know, all day. You know, yeah, yeah, he, he does good. So, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about other stuff other than Juneteenth, but mm -hmm. this has been one of those weeks where the United States government, mm -mm. President, uh -oh. House, Senate, uh -oh. is putting on a show. Now, what they're trying to do, uh, see, what I do is inform you, mm -hmm. and I try to keep you informed. Now, if you don't remember, two years ago, right after the, the, the election, I told you, and I've been saying it all along, you know, so, so that you will be constantly reminded that the information coming here from here is good information because I kind of understand how this system works. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know too, you can't stop domestic oil production because of the democratic environmentalists and get a good economy out of that. You can't go back to putting your, your transportation needs and wants and, and demands in the hands of people who don't like you. Matter of fact, they hate you. But that's what we did. So so that is a bad political policy decision. I'm just telling you. And I knew it then. For the first time in the history of the United States of America, the average price of gas is 5 dollars and as you know it's not going to go down no more sooner than it's going to go up biden has made the gas prices so high even the rona stopped traveling eddie <laughs> it's getting that high okay so 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 there are certain policy decisions mm, bad, that bad. are bad for mm. the economy bad for the people bad all the way around but they still continue to make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And it's my job to keep reminding you, and I am the one that's going to say I told you so. Because it's something, well, it ain't Biden's fault. Yes, it damn mm, sure yep. is. Oh, it yeah. is his fault. The fact that Keystone Pipeline, which was transporting oil from Canada to the United States to add to the oil we was already making, that's why Trump could have oil and gas at a dollar fifty cent a gallon. And Eddie, we were producing our own at that time that we didn't have to rely on paying evil dictators nope. money that we could kept right here in this country. So for all you liberals out there, listen up. Facts do not cease to exist because you ignore them. Well, what I'm saying is that some things when you hear You can process in your head, that's going to cost us some money. Mm. That's bad politics. That's bad policy. I don't have to hate Biden. Mm -mm, not at all. I don't have to even dislike Biden. But some of the stuff he's doing, and I'm going to say, is stupid. It makes absolutely no political sense whatsoever. But I'm, I'm going to tell you. 
I am glad he's doing it because within the next six months, you will have some primaries. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be hard for these senators, these representatives to get reelected in a bad economy and everybody knows it's the president's fault. They can say it. They can have the June, they can have the January sixth hearing, and they can glorify it and make it make it a afternoon show. You know, you know soap, show. soap opera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, 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 which is what they doing. All lies. But see, the problem with that is they can't do it for six months. They can't do this for six months. People already lost interest. Well, well, well the ratings are terrible. Now, no, it, no, nobody gives a crap. Now, now, to come along with what Jesus said, Joe Biden did kill the Keystone Pipeline, but just a week, two weeks ago, he killed the largest offshore oil lease sale of all time in the Gulf of Mexico. That's right. Joe Biden did this, not the president of Russia. Russia does not control the American economy, and they have nothing to replace it. It's the largest contract in American history for oil, and they have nothing to replace it but just kissing on Saudi's butt. To try and get some more out of it. Well, see the, see, the thing about it is, see. That's going to cost money. See, the, they mm. got leftist environmentalists. Mm. Running it. And the leftist environmentalists don't tell you the whole story. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm going to talk about Juneteenth here in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't tell you the whole story because I'm going to tell you what's happening. You take a giant ship, mm -hmm. tanker, mm -hmm. that burns. Over a thousand gallons of fuel an hour. Every hour that tanker is out there, it burns thousands of gallons of fuel. And that's with good weather. It leaves fossil fuel behind. Now think about it. If the fuel is already here in the United States. Mm-hmm. We it's, say the ocean. It's a lot closer than it being 3,000 miles away. And it's got to come from there to here. Asia or China. And then they still costing us more and more money. Because every time it goes up, they not only do they bring it and sell it to us, they use it. So 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 they're, they're putting as much <laughs> pollution in the air. Huge as anything we have ever thought about trying to do. Huge. And that's with them not having no local no local gas or no local oil. And Eddie, these are countries don't give a crap about no, the EPA. They don't give a crap no, about it, the yeah. ocean. Yeah. They don't give a crap about the plastic that comes out of India and China. They don't give a crap about that. And but, yet environments are lined up to give them more money. But 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 Biden is listening. Mm-hmm. And all them butts, but 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 yeah. butthole Biden is listening. Because he's listening to them, knowing he is destroying the American economy. Now, now, wait a minute, Eddie. He is destroying. You have been paying attention to him then. Truck, truck. Biden says the economy is as vibrant and as healthy as he is. That's a statement. It probably, oh. It's probably true. Whoa! It's probably true. I felt true. that one. I it's, felt it. It's probably true. <laughs> now, 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 the other thing, you know, well, you can't, you can't blame Biden for babies not being able to eat. Well, why is it that every damn other country got baby food but us? I mean, I, I just thought about that. How come you know, they got tampons yeah. and we don't? <laughs> I no. Yeah. Hidden below the belt. How we? How they are sending us? I hate being a bigger nation. Yeah. We 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 own too much. We have too much. So now we're begging Australia to send us baby food. We 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 begging other countries. That are far, far, far down the economic ladder than we are, but mm. somehow we ain't got no food. We ain't got no this. We ain't got no that. And this, and this is like rolling cycle of what. If you go to the supermarket, you'll see some shelves are completely full. Some shelves are completely empty. Why? I mean, we are used. We're American. We used to go into the supermarket and all the shelves are full, and, and unless it's a hurricane or something. And then you, you came and bought all the water, you know, all the batteries. I mean, you know, you're not used to not having food stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, I had to get that out of there because I, 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 it is killing me to continue to hear 
Democrats constantly trying to make excuses for Biden's ineptness. No, 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 it's Putin's fault. Well, like I say, Biden, Biden's ineptness. And, and, and Putin and nobody else is going to help him. I'm like this. If, if, if you are stupid and, and you are killing yourself, I'm not going to come and stop you. Come, you know, we, we think everything will be better when you're gone. Mm. But what he is doing, what he is doing, is he's taking the whole party down with him. Huge. You, Eddie, 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 you know how bad it is, Eddie? The woman that just won down in South Texas, that district, Mara Flores, that was a 150-year Democrat-controlled yep. district with 85% Hispanic. My yep. peeps. Yep. They said, we're tired of this. We want something different. Boom. And 150 years. Oh, my God. And see. It's embarrassing. See, he will not fall by himself. No. He's going to take the House. Oh, yeah. And he's going to take the Senate. And I know all y'all Democratic ideologues hate Trump. But guess what, buddy? He's going to look super. He's going to be super savior. Yeah. I know. Like Obama I, was. I, I, know, I, I, I know you guys hate thinking that. And I know you guys hate. And, you, and you're doing all this stuff to destroy Trump. But the problem is, mm -hmm. after your best game has been played, He's going to be the Ronald Reagan. Trump is going to still get re-elected. I know y'all hate that. And, and I'm saying it here. I'm claiming it. I'm, I'm Force Talk Radio. You prophesied. It's, it's here 2022. Prophesied. Saying that Trump is going to... Matter of fact, y'all may get the damn double women. You may may get the Santez and Trump. Woo! I'm just oh, saying, my Lord. I'm Lord saying, have mercy. I'm just saying, if nobody don't, don't get... Into, they don't got anybody Eddie. into Biden. They don't want to give it to Kamala Harris and let him know they hate her even worse. That bad policies are visible to everyone, even the stupid. Look out, Eddie. So Eddie, if, if the only thing the Democrats are drum, the loudest drum they're beating right now is guns, 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 guns. Right? That's the biggest drum they're beating on right now. But they want to sue the gun manufacturers for gun deaths. I said, all right, fine. Let's sue the car manufacturers for DUIs. Let's sue the fast food chains for heart attacks. Let's just sue the fork companies for making forks and making us fat. Where does it end, folks? Guns have been around forever. Well, it's not it's not guns. And, and, and what they tried to do mm -hmm. was kind of make it them them dirty, nasty, wall-mongering Republicans. Oh, my goodness. Now, now, if you think about it, you know, when Trump was president, we had no war. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Now, now the Democrats who are, who are, who are involved in saving everybody, are creating wars. Got more wars on their hands and on their feet and on their butts, and, and we even got Americans dying in other people wars. Everybody, oh, that's right. Everybody's concerned about American boys going to war and, and dying for, for for somebody else's freedom, but yet they still dying for somebody else's freedom, and. and and, and 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 nobody's saying anything. I, I, you can hear. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what my what my uh, coach said one time in the locker room. I want to hear a rat piss on cotton. So 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 he, it's so quiet. Even the crickets ain't creaking. But Eddie, come on now. The Democrats have something to be proud of. The, the San Francisco mayor just recently said she had a great report out saying that less human poop is on the city streets due to the food shortage. So she's happy. Yeah, that may, that may, that may, may, may work in San Francisco, but it's not working anywhere else in the country. Especially in That's New, all they got, Eddie. Especially in New York. That's it. Now, it is something about a city that you can smell mm -mm. five miles away. Ooh. And it ain't the dump. And that's, that, up, and that's uphill. That means the whole city. Upwind. The whole city is a sewage. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it's out there. And I ain't the first one to say it. So, let me tell you about somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell it to you. This is Sports Talk Radio. Because mm -hmm. uh, the day we're not going to do on this day. <gasps> Today. What? No, we're not. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Eddie. We got a bigger, bigger. Fish to fry. Fish to fry. And, and, and something, like something to tell you about that I know many of you did not know. Bring it. Okay. 
and I'm not even tell you who I'm talking about till we get to the end. Mm. Okay. This man was born in 1809. In, in 1816, he was seven years old. He was forced to work because his family was expelled. Hmm. In 1818, he lost his mother. In 1828, he lost his sister. Yep, I know that. In 1831, mm -hmm. he opened his first business, mm -hmm. and it went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. In 1833, he borrowed money to open another business, mm -hmm. and it went bankrupt again. In 1835, he met a wonderful woman. <laughs> he fell in love with her. They got engaged, and she died. <laughs> in 1836, he entered a dark period in his life. He was deep in depression. He remained bedridden for six consecutive months. But he gets up. Mm. He gets up, and in a and in that same year, 1836, he ran in the legislative election and lost. Woo. In 1840, he presented himself as a as an educator, an elector, and he lost. This is why razor blades were invented. In 1842, he met the woman he would end his life with. Mm. They fell in love, got engaged, got married, and she gave him four children, mm -hmm. and they lost three. Woo! This boy didn't have bad luck. In 1843, he appeared at the Congresses, and he lost. No. And then he ran for Congress, and he lost. Mm -mm -mm -mm. In 1845, he appeared again at the Congresses, mm -hmm. and lost again. It's a winning loser. In 1850, his son died. Mm. In 1854, he ran for the U.S. Senate, and lost. I hope you people are there's, hearing There's a theme here, Eddie. I, I hope y'all are hearing me. There's a common thread, I think. I'm not sure about it. Keep going. In 1856, mm -hmm. he ran for vice president of the United States of America. Goodness. He didn't even get a hundred votes. Mm. He ran for vice president, didn't get a hundred votes. This nationally. In 19... In 1858, he ran again for the Senate, lost again. Mm. Boy, won't give up. In 1860, he was elected to president to be president of the United States of America. That's where the phrase "anybody can become president" and Joe followed it. Abraham Lincoln mm -hmm. won one political race. The big one. In his entire life. That took him out, too. One race. How long was he in president? Or was he, uh, I guess, did he live it? Two years? He was elected to. Uh, he was elected for two exceptional terms. He was assassinated in the beginning of his second term. Uh, he was one of the most respected and impactful presidents in the United States history. Incredible. It's important to tell his story of perseverance because we see the hero. But we don't see 
the backstage of the affiliations. In today's society, he'll just become a transgender and call it good. You need to accept them, no matter how difficult they are. Mm -hmm. Know that as long as you breathe, mm. your goal will be waiting for you. Mm. Trust in God. Ooh. He is fair and loving. Awesome. Abraham Lincoln had faith to the very end. He had a short mission, but he got it done, Eddie. He, it took his whole life. Mm. He kept running, kept yep. running. And, and, and I can see when he was seven years old, he wasn't popular. <laughs> I've seen pictures of him. But, that cute either. No, well, he, he, he was an ugly man. <laughs> I, 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 I have no problem saying that. That he was an ugly man. Uh, and, 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 and the woman uh, that, he, that, that, he, that he fell in love with, neither one of them was beauty queen. Now, Eddie, you, you, there's a little part in there. When he was about six and his sister was eight, their father, their mother had died. And the father said, I'm going out to find a woman. And he left them out in the cabin in the woods with, some, with a gun and some bullets. He said, I'll be back in a while. It took him a year yeah. to come back with the woman that he found. And as soon as that, he brought that woman to that little shack, the kids ran back behind the woman. They didn't know who she was. They ran back behind her because they liked her suddenly. Incredible. Yeah. So, people, I know how frustrating... It can be sometimes. Mm -hmm. I ran for U.S. Congress four times myself. And the person that beat me is still there. Mm. No one has beat her since I ran in 2006, 2008, 2010. 2012. That was my last time running for U.S. Congress. Now, they have a lot of people running, but they haven't had any Republicans mm -hmm. that came as <clears throat> close to beating her as I did. And, and, and that's when I was, I was new to this Republican thing. Mm. I just became a Republican in, in, in 2004. And in 2006, I was running for the U.S. Congress. And here you are getting ourselves a Republican club, too. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, too. All right. We're going to have a Republican club here in Tampa Bay. The Hillsborough County Black Republican Club. Black. So, 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 you know, I've known and I've seen some things happen. And one of the things I have done in going to city council meeting is to establish mm. that all black all black folks are not ill-equipped to deal with some of the stuff that happens in politicking. And I keep saying politics is a blood sport. Mm, it is. And it's a blood sport in Tampa if nowhere else in Florida or in this country. Because in this city, we got the strong mayor government, former government. City Council, collectively, can do some stuff, mm -hmm. but if they get out of line, the mayor tends to whip them back in shape, or back in place. With the big investigations put on them with taxpayer expense. Well, it's, well they, That's crap. Well, they spent three, $300 in the last six, $300,000 in the last six months against a black man against one black city council because he wasn't falling in line with the white people well you know well they got rid of one they got rid of one you know they, and and the other the other white person that they would like to to get rid of uh whip in the place he got money he got clout ah you'll beat him see that's the problem see they, they they get folks who are easily manipulative or manipulated yeah and and what happens is if you're going to rule with, a, with an iron fist, mm -hmm. and, and I'm not taking anything from her personally, mm -hmm. I'm just saying when you can identify what political tactics are being used, the ones that are successful and the ones that are not, and the results, 
and, and, and when you got a strong mayor form of government, that strong mayor need to be good. Because if they ain't good, it's bad for your community. It's bad for your city. Now, let me tell you some stuff about Juneteenth that you didn't mm-hmm. know locally. About 15 years ago, I was a member of the Sheriff Black Advisory Council. And the Sheriff Black Advisory Council then had been around for, for 28 years. It mm-hmm. probably got started under Malcolm Beard. Right after they had had some disturbances in Tampa, one of the few riots that they had had, and I and it was on my uh, on this day last week. I told y'all in in, in 1976 they had race riots here in Tampa. Mm-hmm. So so anyway, they started in his wisdom. Sheriff Black Advisory Council, I was Malcolm Bill. And we had been around, and what we was doing as the Black Advisory Council, you know, being being involved in community, and, and, and one of the other things that we did is awarding, or giving awards to sheriff employees, his jailsmen, uh, his bail bond, his bondsmen, his, uh, his officers, his people who, who did internal investigation, and, you know, pretty much whoever were black there, we, we, we let them recognize, uh, we recognize and let them know that they was important to our community. Mm-hmm. So, good, 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 years and years and years, years passed, and then David G., mm-hmm. who was our sheriff before Chad Chronicle, had decided that he didn't want to go to three banquets. So we had the Black uh, black Advisory Council, he had the Hispanic Advisory Council, and he had just created, you know, an Indian Advisory Council. Busy man. So if he said that, you know, if all three of you guys are having a awards banquet, then I got three banquets to go to. Now, 300, 365 days in a year, but I, but I got to ah. spend three of them Awarding, awarding people that work for me, underlings. The followers. Yeah. So so he may not have been in the best of health, but three days for people who who give you their all every day. Mm-hmm. You know. And but but he didn't want to go to three. So he, he so he took hours. I was in was in October, uh, the third or fourth week of October every year. And he didn't give us a choice. He kind of came to one of our meetings and said, well, we're going to do, we're going to take over the awards banquets. We're going to have one. I'm going to, me and my staff are going to organize it. And we're going to have one. And, and I'm going to determine when it's going to be. And we're going to take your date. So so that, that's how that went down. Me, not being the, the step and fetch kind of black guy, Said, okay, you can do that. Let's find us a date that that the white can't come and take from us. Did you get permission first, Eddie? Now what did I just say? We came, we went and got a date, mm-hmm. and I got the folks together, and we say Juneteenth is a holiday that blacks a lot of places in this country celebrate every year. Thanks. So so. The first couple of years we did Juneteenth breaks. We had a break, you know, look, just doing exploratory. You know, the cheapest meal of the day is breakfast. You can go buy anybody a good breakfast, and it's not going to break you. So, so we did Juneteenth breakfast, and then later it expanded to Juneteenth lunches. The Juneteenth lunches have been going on every year except for. Uh, the two COVID years, in which not, nobody did much of anything. Mm-hmm. We had the the National Juneteenth Coalition growing stronger and stronger every year. We have a local national member of the National Juneteenth Coalition. So they were doing stuff. We were doing stuff together. My vision when we first started this was for there to be at least 30 Juneteenth events, one every day in June. 
I know there's other people, LGBTQ, yes. M-L-L-O-S-B. Y and everything else. And there's a couple other groups say, you know, June is their official month. Okay. Historically, nothing but these other groups or organizations make it more significant than black folks in, in the country being free. And it's going to be hard. It's going to take a really, really badass white guy mm-hmm. or girl to to, 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 to to move this this Juneteenth thing because it's caught fire. I don't know if you heard. They, they, even, they even got a Juneteenth song. They got a Juneteenth flag. And it's about 20 or 30 different organizations within the next week or two having Juneteenth events. As I say, we got one this afternoon. You probably have heard about two or three already happening today and then tomorrow. They got some church events and some other stuff. And and, and it's plenty. This is straight to black folks. This is me telling black folks. There's plenty people and there's plenty of time in June for you to have a <coughs> event. And, and even if somebody else got events at the same time, there's more than enough people and money, if that's what you're mm-hmm. into it for, to do it without fussing and fighting. That's what I, I didn't want that to happen from, from the very beginning. And it was a couple of people showed up at city council talking about other Juneteenth organizations having events and mm-hmm. getting money and all that kind of stuff. We never, now, it went from the Sheriff Black Advisory Council mm-hmm. To 100 black men start doing did the lunch in a, a few years, and the Grand Crew de Libertalia has done it a few years. So so it has moved moved from different organizations, but it's, it has been steadfastly on Friday, the 19th, uh, that Friday, before or uh, after the night close whichever one come on a Friday because what we found is people can take a half a day on Friday, come to our event, enjoy themselves, and get some history. Mm-hmm get entertainment, and all the money raised above and beyond the event itself, the cost of the event, went to scholarships for students going to ACC and students going to USF. So so, so we didn't like make all these rules and regulations to make it hard for kids to get that money, because if you get the money to the school and they got to go through financial aid, mm-hmm. that's a pain in the butt. I'm telling you, that's a pain in the butt. And then sometimes they may not give you your money. So we gave the money to the kids. Right well, there. So you're actually giving back to the community, before literally. The, before the event was over, they got they got a check from, for, from us for whatever the amount was that mm-hmm. were raised by, the, raised by that event. So this year, I had decided, because see, when, I'm, when we're doing it, we start in January. So January, raising funds, collecting money, you know, making arrangement, getting entertainment, you know, securing the place and all that kind of stuff. You know, so usually by March, I'm usually, we're usually done mm-hmm. with with the collecting and the money and the begging and, and in that part of the process. So at the, the end, we sell some tables and and then we have the event and, and, and then we help other people. Other Juneteenth people celebrating, we try to support them in their events mm-hmm. and the, the Miss Juneteenth pageant, and 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 that the uh, Juneteenth so black Ju- community coming together, Ju- you're trying to feed coalition. that, right? We, 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 Which we, it we, should we, be. We're trying to support each other. That should be. And, and see, when I heard that people were fussing and fighting, you know, you should be able to raise money, do your event, and not have to go to the city or the county, or the state. I mean, the city, the county, the state give you money, mm-hmm. but you can't come back and say, well, this y'all gave so and so and so. More than more than us, and we ask for us, and not, that childish crap. See, we can't let that divide us. Mm-hmm. We have come so far. And next year, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen next year. We're gonna have more, mm. more events, more people, more celebrations, and we're gonna get the city of Tampa, who do not have a holiday of Juneteenth. It's a holiday in the country. It's a holiday for the county, but it's not a holiday for the city. Mm. And I heard somebody on, on one of the other shows say it's a city holiday. No, it's yeah. not a city of Tampa holiday. I went to city council Thursday 
and had that discussion with him. And he knows. By, by next year, we may have it as a sitting parliament. They got excuses for everything. Mm. But I told them, as city council, if you decide that it's a holiday, I'm quite sure the seven of you can figure out how to make it a holiday. <laughs> you want it, you get it. You want it, you can get it. Boom. It ain't a whole lot. It's not. There's nothing in the city of Tampa charter that says you cannot have a Juneteenth holiday. No. If it ain't in there like that, then you can find a way to make it happen. Mm-hmm. And the mayor was there for raising the Juneteenth flag over City Hall. So, so evidently she's she's with it, or she's she probably just told this what we're doing. That's like, it. She's faking like she's with it, but the fact of the matter that she did it, you know, that means a lot. You know, it's not a not a city holiday yet, but it's coming. I can tell you that because the city of Tampa can't survive. If, if it's major voter, voter supported block decide that if you ain't can't do that, mm-hmm. we ain't gonna vote for you this year. Ooh. See that that's all they gotta do. Make them responsible? They, that's, that's all they gotta do. So so it's out there. So now let me tell you about this other thing. Horse Talk Radio has been on the cutting edge of a lot of political and other things that's happening here in Tampa Bay. And a lot of you folks could not stand me when I started. A lot of you folks still can't stand me. But I got more folks can stand me now than could stand me when we first got started. Over the years, you ain't too bad, Eddie. So, our next step mm-hmm. in moving this community forward on Thursday. So I had to do it in Freedom Black Freedom Month. Okay. I had to get this thing done. I've been talking about it, been talking about it. Had to get all the dots on the I's and get all the crosses on the T's and, and get all that stuff done. So the last Thursday, the last day in Black Freedom Month. Mm-hmm. We'll be having the first meeting of the Hillsborough County Black Republican Club. Is that going to be run with the REC? No. Independent? What did I just say? I'm just checking, making sure. <laughs> the Hillsborough County Black Republican Club will be having our first official meeting. Official. The address, 5508, which y'all know that's... That, 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 that's where we want to be able to meet. Down the road, yeah. 5508 North 50th Street, Unit 24. That's the conference room. Mm. The meeting is going to be on Thursday, June 30th. We're going to gather. Doors open at 6.30. Meeting starts at 7. Cash for I will bring some food. I said food. I will bring some food. <laughs> there will not be any cash bar set up oh, that oh. night. If you want to get drunk, <laughs> you want to get a DWI, you want to get have somebody to blame your problems on. This is a disclaimer we're calling out. It will not be the Hillsborough County <laughs> Black Republican <laughs> Club. It's false. You, you, you went and bought that beer. Wine, liquor, moonshine on your own after the meeting. Our disclaimer's been given. Do not come to the meeting drunk. <laughs> we, will, we will have somebody there. Escort you out the door. To remove you from the premises. <laughs> it's, just, it's just my understanding and the nature of people who get in, intoxicated and then go to meetings where they're trying to do serious business. Mm-hmm. You you're not in the right state of mind. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, so June thirtieth, first Hillsborough County Black Republican Club meeting. The, the Black Republican Club started right here in Hillsborough County, twenty five years ago, and then spread throughout the country. Chain Gang Charlie, Charlie Chris. Mm-hmm. 
is the reason most of them disbanded. So we started one in St. Pete about 10 years ago, and it's still around. So, so that the potential is there. And there is another organization called the Frederick Douglass Foundation, the Frederick Douglass Institution, that was started. And some people thought those were black Republican clubs, but they was chartered differently. The black Republican clubs were chartered through the state of Florida, the Florida, uh, which was Florida, the Republican Party of Florida. Mm -hmm. The Republican Party of Florida chartered the black Republican club. The Frederick Douglass Club was chartered nationally through the Frederick, Frederick Douglass Institute. Mm -hmm. So, just want everybody to know, everybody to understand, we will make a difference in this community. And it is open. And I'm going to say this, and I want you to believe it. Because there's going to be a lot of people who are still registered Democrats who want to come by and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. I got to say, for myself, I went to several Republican club meetings before I became a registered Republican. My goal, and neither would the club go, be to 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 garner and go out there and, and, and get a whole bunch of black folks to become Republican. What we want you to do, we want you to come see what we are doing, mm -hmm. see yeah, what yeah. the action is, and, and and understand that we got we got probably more black Republican black Republican candidates this year than we probably had in 10, 20 years hmm. that, that I know of. Wow. There's, there's at least six or seven black Republican candidates. Getting tired of the lies, Eddie. Okay, we got a phone call. Let's let, let, let's let's get them in and, and get them out. Welcome to Porch Talk Radio on this fine Saturday afternoon. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And what say you? Hello. Hey, hello. Hey, hey, guys. Um, thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm Ernest. I'm I'm calling out of Wesley Chapel. Okay. Listen, guys, this, this is serious here, man. I just wonder uh, anybody out here that's listening, or or you two guys can can help me. Eddie, I just I just gave a dentist thirty thousand dollars to do some dental work, and 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 I'm not satisfied at all, and I just don't know where to turn, man. I called two two law firms, um, I'm not naming anybody, just called two law firms that don't handle. It seems like nobody handles dental um, claims or something like that. But the thirty thousand dollars, and then I, I I wrote I wrote back on an email. And they, they haven't addressed anything. They haven't even, like, contacted me back. And it's only been five months. So I feel that this dental work is just awful, man, just awful. And it seems like I don't want to bring anything into it, but I just want to know if there's anybody out there that can tell me something that can guide me in, in, a, in a direction. Um, I, I, I just feel kind of lost at this age. I'm 63, and I just feel like I don't know where to turn. Well, give, that's giving them a lot more money. If you can, give give your number, and any anyone in our listening audience will, gi will, will give you a call. Okay, man. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Give your number. Give your number. Oh, okay. My number is area code 813, and it's 333-4170. One more time. Area code 813-333-4170. All right, thank you. If anybody in our listening audience can help this uh, gentleman, please give him a call. Please and, do. And, and with that, you know, I, I just got to say, happy Juneteenth. We, we can do this thing in Tampa. <coughs> we can do it better than St. Pete. It's not a competition, but, mm -hmm. but I just think we could do a better job of celebrating our freedom. They've been doing it longer, but, but we, if we do it the right way, it ain't going to take long for us to catch up. So, Tampa Bay, I know you guys are out there celebrating. Continue to celebrate. There's a couple more events tonight. You know, have fun. And happy Father's Day for those who have kids who are their own and those who have taken care of other people's kids. We love you. Bye-bye. God bless America.